Up until now, we've been performing some really basic and mundane transformations on our artwork. Now it's time to get a little bit more creative by utilizing some of Illustrator's distortion and transformation tools. Let's take a look. I've got a blank document open here, and you can do that by simply going to the File menu and choosing New and creating a document. It doesn't matter how big or anything else. Just a blank document will do. I'm then going to draw some basic shapes that we can manipulate. I'm going to come over to the shapes, click and hold, and find the star tool. And the star tool, I'm just going to click and draw out a star like this, and I'll move it out on my artboard. I'm then going to hold down my Option or Alt key and click and drag out a duplicate. Then I'll hold down my Option or Alt key again and duplicate this one as well. So now I have three stars out of my artboard. Once I have my three stars out there, I'm going to select the first one here, and I'll give it a nice color there. Take the stroke away. The middle one here, I'll put a no stroke on that as well. Make it yellow. And then the final one, we'll make that green, just like this. So I've got these three stars out here, and I'm going to distort them all differently. Let's first select this one, and then we'll come over here to the tools, and I'm going to look inside of a tool called the Width tool. This is what you should see by default. When I click and hold on the Width tool, you're going to notice that there are several other tools inside of this toolbox. If you want to break this toolbox out, you can simply click right here on this little arrow. Doing so turns those tools into their own free-floating panel, which is really cool. Right here, the first tool is called the Warp tool. The Warp tool allows you to warp objects based on anchor points that you draw across while you're using it. So for instance, I can click and drag here, and it warps in that point. Click and drag here, warping that one, and here, warping that one. Almost gives me like a starfish-like appearance. I can undo that with Command or Control Z. I can then use something called the Twirl tool. This is one of my favorites. So I'll come here, click and hold, come here, click and hold for a shorter time, I'll come right here to the bottom and I'll click and hold for a longer time. And you can see there I created three totally different looks with the same tool simply by holding my cursor down at different lengths. It's pretty neat. Now let's switch over to the Pucker tool to see how that works. The Pucker tool is located right here. And basically what the Pucker tool allows you to do is suck different pieces of the artwork inward, creating a puckered-like effect. I'm going to do this on the middle star right here, so I'm going to actually grab the selection tool really quick and select this star, and then I'll grab the pucker tool. Once I grab the pucker tool, I can then pucker different pieces of this inward. See how it kind of just draws those points in as I drag? So I can almost create like a flower really quickly, something kind of like that. Finally, let's take a look at the bloat tool. Again, the bloat tool works much the same way the pucker tool does in that I just come to an anchor point, click, hold, and it bloats it out rather than sucking it in. So I'll use it for this shape over here. I'll grab my selection tool and grab this guy. Select my bloat tool. And then I can come right here and watch what it does to the end of the star. Just bloats it right out. Same thing right there, right there, right there. As you can see, you can get pretty creative with what it does. Actually bloat this out a little bit more. Almost making like a little person out of this. And then I'll just click away to deselect. So, three shapes that started out identical now look completely different simply by clicking and dragging around with these tools. You can experiment with all the different tools such as the scallop tool, the crystallize tool, and the wrinkle tool as well. Each one does different things and will make your artwork look that much more different. A lot of these tools are referred to as instant logo tools because you can take a basic shape and transform them instantly into a remarkable shape like the one you see here in the middle and then use that for a logo or an icon. It's really simple to transform ordinary artwork into something really amazing just by using these little tools. If you don't like the way these tools behave, that's okay. You can actually refine the way the tools behave by going into the tool options for each tool. This is not something that you'll find in the object menu or the preferences or anything like that. Again, it's hidden inside the tool itself. So if you wanted to change the way that the twirl tool worked, for instance, simply come to the twirl tool and double click. Double clicking opens up the twirl tool options. 
This is where you can adjust the width of the tool. That's how big the actual brush is that you're working with. The height of the tool, the angle of the tool, and also the intensity. If I bump up the intensity, so let's say 100, and bump up the size, so let's do 200 by 200, then I can also select the twirl rate. So I'll set this at about 75 degrees, and I can type that in just like that. The amount of detail, I can crank that up just a little bit to five. And we want this to remain a simple path. So the simplify option, we might want to crank that up just a little bit. Once we have that all set, I'll go ahead and hit OK. When I hit OK, you'll notice my brush is significantly larger than it was before. And if I come over to this shape, the same shape I was on before, and click, look how wacky that is. Really quick and really fast because I turned up the intensity. Do the same thing right over here. And you notice since I was in between these two and I didn't actually have them selected, it twirled both of them together, intertwining them in that pattern, which is really neat. Do the same thing right here. Really and truly, the magic formula here is putting yourself in a seat and playing with these tools to see exactly how they work and how they'll interact with your artwork. You can create some amazing things simply by pointing, clicking, and watching the magic happen.